This lecture is part two on Fibre Channel. And here you'll learn how we secure our fibre channel storage through the use of zoning on our switches and LUN masking on the storage system. First thing to cover is fibre channel zoning. Zoning is configured on your fiber channel switches and it controls which hosts are allowed to communicate with each other over the fiber channel network. Initiators, that's typically your normal servers, will be allowed to communicate with the targets, that's the storage system. But initiators will not be allowed to communicate with each other over fiber channel. Now, this sometimes confuses people and you think, wait, my servers need to be able to talk to each other. Yes, they do, but they don't need to do that over the fiber channel network. If we look at the infrastructure again here, you see that you've got your normal Ethernet network that your clients are connecting to the servers to, and the servers can connect to each other over that network up at the top as well. On the bottom part of the slide here over the fiber channel network, that's for storage. The servers need to connect to the storage system. They don't connect to each other over the storage part of the network though. So when we configure our zoning on our fiber channel switches, we're going to allow the servers to connect into the storage system, but they're not gonna have connectivity to each other. That makes things more secure and more stable. So when we configure the zoning, you see I've got an example here. I've got my storage system up at the top and it's WWPN is that great big long address you see just underneath it. So I've configured an alias to make things more convenient. The alias for the storage system is Net NetApp Controller 1. Then Server 1 down at the bottom, it's got its WWPN. We've got a configured alias of Server 1. And Server 2 down in the bottom right has got its alias of Server 2. And there's a couple of switches in between the servers and their storage. So I need to allow Server 1 to connect to the storage. And I need to allow Server 2 to connect to the storage as well. And I'm going to configure a separate zone for each server and then I group them all into a zone set. So my first zone name, you can see the box on the right in the slides, I configure zone name server one for server one and in there I put server one and the NetApp controller storage system. Then I configure a separate zone, zone name server two and in there goes server two and then exactly the same alias for the same storage system again. So both server one and server two are connecting to the storage system on the same WWPN. And then I configure my zone set where I group those together. So I've called my zone set name, my zone set. And I say member the server one zone and member the server two zone. When you configure this on your switches, typically, because Fibre Channel is so automated and it replicates everything, usually it's possible to just configure this on one switch. So we could configure it on switch one, for example, and then the config will be automatically replicated down to switch two as well. Depends on how you've set up your switches, but that's usually possible. Okay, so that is our zoning done. Now the servers can connect to the storage, but the servers cannot connect to each other. Now, you maybe notice when we do that, the both the servers are able to connect to the storage system. So that's secured them from each other, but at that point, they both get access to everything on the storage system as far as the switches are concerned. It's critical that the right LUN, which is the virtual disk, is presented to the right host. So we want the server one LUN to go to server one, the server two LUN to go to server two. If the wrong host is able to connect to a LUN that it's not meant to, it's liable to corrupt it. So it's critical that that does not happen. And zoning on the switches prevents unauthorized hosts from reaching the storage system, so it secures it from somebody plugging in and getting to the storage it shouldn't be able to, but it won't prevent a host from accessing the wrong LUN once it gets there. Zoning is doing nothing to prevent server one from accessing server two's LUN. So for that, 
we need to configure LUN masking as well, and that gets done on the storage system. That locks a LUN down to the host or hosts who are authorized to access it. So when you're configuring Fiber Channel for security, you need to do both. You configure zoning on your switches and you configure LUN masking on the storage system. So let's look at an example again here. So on the storage system, I create a LUN for server one. It's its boot LUN, so I've called it server one boot. And I say that the initiator that is allowed to connect to that LUN is server one. And then I also create a LUN for server two, which is its boot LUN. And the only thing that's allowed to connect to that is server two. So right now I've configured my zoning and I've configured my LUN masking as well. In the next lecture, I'll tie all the information from the previous lectures together, and you'll see how the server automatically connects to its storage.